I'm going to do something just a little different <coughs> because I don't actually see how I could follow that either. <coughs> what a bunch of dreamers. That's what they said, wasn't it? That uh, those who wouldn't want to be here, those you left behind who are doing something else this weekend, that uh, we're just hanging around talking books, we're dreamers. And yes, we are. And we're worse. We enjoy the dreams of other people. <laughs> That's what we do. We enter the dreams, the innermost fantasies of other minds, every time we open a book and begin to read it. Big ones, small ones, scary, silly dreams like his and hers. And puzzle box dreams, you can feel bending your mind somewhere that kind of itches. Dreams of this world, past ones, future ones, places we haven't been, places we wouldn't go ever, and places we wish existed. We sink into different personalities, assume different bodies, become something else. We're a kick-ass lesbian uh, Chinese-American uh, accountant. Canadian. accountant. <laughs> we hear toasters who didn't go and listen to their toaster. We quiver in our beds knowing that a monster's coming. We're transported to a war and we're expected to win it and we find ourselves on a road trod by dragons. Because reading is a superpower. We could do it at home, thank you, so why are we here? Because we're addicted to that power. We can't get enough of it. We want more of it. We want more of what we loved yesterday. We want more we haven't found yet. And have you seen the merchant's room yet? <laughs> OK. Apparently, we're flying home, but you have no excuse if you drove here. Just fill your trunk, OK? <laughs> That's what you do. And the other thing we are doing here, fellow dreamers, we're not alone. That person next to you, they read too. <laughs> Honest. The entire front row, readers. The rest of you, yeah, yeah, it's contagious, it's madness. I blame the concom. <laughs> they got us all here. They know the conversations we'll have and the panels. There are people here who will talk out loud about reading and books. I kid you not. <laughs> I kid you not. Any kind at all, any book at all, just here to talk with you and answer questions. You're going to have problems this weekend being in more than one place at once, all weekend long. I blame the concom for that too. But there's worse than dreamers. There are dream weavers, wordsmiths, storytellers, who, let me assure you, love readers to distraction. While being readers, it'd be illegal except that reading and writing aren't the same. For starters, reading is kind of comfy. Writing, paper cuts, and that's the start. <laughs> Burn my hand, getting my coffee cup out of the microwave, so I had to write with a sack of frozen peas in my hand for a while, because I, wouldn't, you know, I had to get things done, so I'm typing with frozen peas. It's dangerous work. <laughs> dangerous work. And the sore behinds, we won't even go there. And for another thing, readers are like the flash. You all are. You consume words so quickly you make us queasy. Writers, we're so grateful to get a thousand words in sensible order by the end of the day, we pause to congratulate ourselves and try really hard not to think of the other 99,000 we haven't written yet. <laughs> You're nodding. You nodded before. Why are you nodding? I knew it. You're writers too. <laughs> You're not just dreamers who read, are you? You want to be writers, or you are writers, and I blame the con, con for that, too. They created the perfect place for you. Laid out programming and events, giving you access to editors and publishers and readers. It's diabolical. The next thing you know, they're going to offer live slush readings in front of a group of industry pros. Oh, wait. Now, that's on tomorrow. I got two of them. <laughs> And a mass autographing, I mean, really, there's going to be, uh, wh what was it going to be? It's about 80? 80 authors in a room that can't get out. <laughs> <laughs> and if you bring them cold beer, they will never leave. <laughs> what was the concom thinking? That putting us together matters. That what we do and what we care about matters. That you do 
to have books, we need writers. Writers takes perseverance, determination, the willingness to contort your body and your social life into painful positions and get cramps. Suffice to say, it's not for everybody. The courage to be here, mystifying your family and friends who think you should be outdoors on such a lovely weekend. <laughs> okay, that's courage. The courage to attend a full day workshop when you walk in and there's a table with a black cloth over what looks like a body. Thank you, Randy, for that image. <laughs> with glue, it was glue. And hardest of all, if you want your writing to be read, if you want to make a living from your writing, you have to let other people, people like that guy, pick up your dreams and your innermost beliefs. He's gonna take them home, He's going to get comfy, put on some soft music, I can tell, and he's going to read them in less time than it took you to write a thousand of them, and he'll have an opinion, and he might come here, and he might talk about what he read of yours to other people. It's villainous. Who put us in this terrifying position? I blame the Concom in every good way, because if we spend this weekend together, Dreams there surely will be. Thank you.